open our eyes that we To all my entrepreneurs, my name is Sharice Johnson Moore, and welcome to Sharice Johnson Moore's podcast. Do you have products and services that you want to tell the world about? Well, I have an offer for you. Did you know that when you make a 60 minute voiceover ad and place it in podcasts, that it increases your business awareness by 50% in the marketplace? Voiceover ads aren't that expensive. They range from $15 to $25. It all depends on where you place your ad in the podcast. So come on in and place your ad on Sharice Johnson Moore's podcast and tell the world what you have to offer. You can reach me at I am Sharice at ShariceNJohnsonMoore.com or 724-570-1153 for further details. Come on, let's tell the world what you are made of. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hello, everyone, and how are you doing this marvelous, blessed day? It is another day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I am your host, Sharice Johnson Moore, and welcome to Daily Devotional. I want to say it is an honor and a privilege to bring you this word every morning. And today on Daily Devotional, we will be talking about Ruth. Chapter 2, 1 through 23. Ruth, chapter 2, 1 through 23. 
And our topic this morning in the chapter will be Ruth meets Boaz and Ruth gleans in Boaz's fields. Ruth meets Boaz and Ruth gleans in Boaz's fields. Okay, so I want you to get your tablet, your cell phone, your uh, computer, laptop, however you be, however you read the word, right? And I want us to go and and and, and learn something from this, and glean some from this as well. So we want to, uh, you know, just take out this time and give God His time first thing in the morning. Okay, uh, I want to welcome everyone to. Daily devotional. Come on now, let's get busy. All right, everybody, let's get into Ruth chapter two, one through twenty three. And Naomi had a kinsman of her husband's, a mighty man of wealth of the family of Elimelech, and his name was Boaz. And Ruth the Moabitess said unto Naomi, Let me now go to the field and glean ears of corn after him in whose sight I shall find grace. And she said unto her, Go, my daughter. And she went and came and gleaned in the field after the reapers. And her hap was to light on a part of the field belonging unto Boaz, who was of the kindred of Elimelech. And behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem and said unto the reapers, The Lord be with you. And they answered him, The Lord bless thee. Then said Boaz unto his servant that was set over the reapers, Whose damsel is this? And the servant that was set over the reapers answered and said, It is the Moabitish damsel that came back with Naomi out of the country of Moab. And she said, I pray you, let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. So she came and have continued even from the morning until now, that she tarried a little in the house. Then said Boaz unto Ruth, Hearest thou not, my daughter? Go not to glean in another field, neither go from hence, but abide here fast by my maidens. Let thine eyes be on the field that they do reap, and go thou after them. Have I not charged the woman, I mean the young man, that they shall not touch thee? And when thou art athirst, go unto the vessels, and drink of that which the young men have drawn. Then she fell on her face, and bowed herself to the ground, and said unto him, Why have I found grace in thy sight, that thou shouldest take knowledge of me, seeing I am a stranger? And Boaz answered and said unto her, I have fully been showed me. It, it hath fully been showed me all that thou hast done unto thy mother-in-law since the death of thine husband, and how thou hast left thy father, thy father and thy mother in the land of, of thy nativity, and art come unto a people which thou knowest not where, where to or. The Lord recompense thy work, and a full reward be given thee of the Lord God of Israel, under whose wings thou art come to trust. Then she said, Let me find favor in thy sight, my Lord, for that thou hast comforted me, and for that thou hast spoken friendly unto thy handmaid, though I be not like unto one of thine handmaidens. And Boaz said unto her, At meal time, come thou hither, and eat of the bread, and dip thy morsel in the vinegar. And she sat beside the reapers, and he reached her, and he reached her parched corn, 
and she did eat and was suffice and left. And when she was risen up to glean, Boaz commanded his young men, saying, Let her glean even among the sheaves, and reproach her not. And let fall also some of the handful of purpose for her, and leave them, that she may glean them, and rebuke her not. So she gleaned in the field until evening, and beat out that she had gleaned, and it was about an ephod of barley. And she took it up and went into the city. And her mother-in-law saw what she had gleaned. And she brought forth and gave to her that she had reserved after she was sufficed. And her mother-in-law said unto her, Where hast thou gleaned today? And where wrong wroughtest thou? Blessed be he that did take knowledge of thee. And she showed her mother-in-law with whom she had wrought, and said, The man's name with whom I, I wrought, it, wrought today is Boaz. And Naomi said unto her daughter-in-law, Blessed be he of the Lord. Who have not left all his kin kind, left all his kindness to the living and to the dead. And Naomi said unto her, The man is near of kin unto us, one of our next kinsmen. And Ruth and Ruth the Moabitess said, He said unto me also, Thou shalt keep fast by my young men until they have ended all my harvest. And Naomi said unto Ruth, her daughter-in-law, It is good, my daughter, that thou go out with his maidens, that they meet thee not in any other field. So she kept fast by the maidens of Boaz to glean unto the end of barley harvest and of wheat harvest and dwelt with her mother-in-law. I have just read Ruth chapter 2, 1 through 23. And, who Jesus, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, we come to you to say thank you. We thank you, Lord, that we learn something new every day. We learn something new every day when we read your word. We may read the same chapter, the same verse, the same, but it always comes and you always give us, give us a different interpretation of what it means. Ooh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Mm-mm-mm. Lord, we just, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to, to be able to open our eyes this morning that with the breath in our bodies and activity of our limbs and our, we are in our right minds, Lord, just, just for the day. Just for the day. You know? Not any other, just for the day. The day is the day that something different is going to happen, and I, and I feel it. Something going to happen. Something different is going to happen to to you know and, and the thing is God thank you Lord thank you Jesus for allowing us to be here today you didn't have to wake us up this morning you didn't have to put the breath in our body you didn't have to breathe into us to wake us up you didn't like you did Adam you didn't have to breathe into us to wake us up that's how we wake us up in the morning we take our breath you're breathing into us with the air that we breathe God made the air, God made the sea, God made the the trees, the birds. God, you made everything. You give us the ideas and for the concept. You give us the vision of what to create, what to do, what to say. God, you control us in every way. And sometimes we don't even, we don't realize, we don't think of it like that. But Lord, we know that you are who you are. You are God of all creation. Lord, we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. May you add a blessing to the reading of your word. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen, amen, and amen. (laughs) 
Hello to all my entrepreneurs. My name is Sharice Johnson Moore. I am the owner, CEO of LBM TV. It is a streaming channel that can be located on the C1 Media Network Smart TV app. This app can be located on Apple TV, Roku TV, Amazon Fire Stick, Android TV, and Google TV. We have advertising spots available for businesses that want to advertise their products or services on our channel. We have an audience of 4.25 million viewers daily reaching 70 plus countries. We have advertising packages to fit your company's needs. We would love for you to join the LBM family. You can reach us through our email address, lbmtvmedia at gmail.com or call us at 724-570-1153 for further details. Talk to you soon and let's advertise, advertise and tell the world what you are made of. All right, now, let's get into Ruth, chapter 2, 1 through 23. We see that Ruth finally meets Boaz. And he is one of Naomi's husband's relatives, kinsmen. That's what kinsmen mean that they're related and she decides to go to a field to she she lets Naomi know that she is getting ready to go and go to the field and glean some corn because she know that her and Naomi have to eat And she has decided that she is going to take it upon herself to make sure that they have food and substance to eat. So Ruth goes to the field, starts to glean, which means gather. And she, while she's in the field, the gleamers are, the, the, the field hands are working to collect the corn and while she's gathering the corn she's noticed by Boaz and Boaz asked the workers who is this woman and the the head uh, the supervisor I'm going to say the supervisor of the field hands Tells Boaz, I do not know her. She just showed up and she's been behind us gathering the leftovers that have that have fallen or uh, that we might have missed. She's been gathering corn. And so Boaz doesn't have a problem with her gathering the corn. He tells the workers, don't bother her. Don't touch her. Don't, you know, let her, let her keep gathering. He gives, he gives in actuality, he has a heart and he sees that she does not mind working. And he tells the field hands, look, let her keep gleaming then. Let her get, let her, let her do what she do. Don't bother her. Okay. And when the when the workers stop working, they go to you know their house and they sit down and 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 they and and um they sit down and they take a break or at the end of the day they gather themselves and they you know they stop for a minute and Boaz comes and asks her Boaz comes and asks her, who are you? 
And she says, I'm Ruth. And he says to her, you can gather all the corn you want. You can keep gleaming every day. You know, you, you come here and you could get what you want out the field. And she says, she's so apologetic. She gets on her knees and says, oh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Okay. And then, um, you know, she appreciates his niceness and gives him this, you know, the, the speech of gratitude. And she does every day she comes, every day she keeps coming back. She keeps coming back, he come back, even in 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 um barley season, and in she she comes back at the end, and she you know she keeps gathering the whole season for the bar corn and the barley, wheat, and she goes home. And she says, okay, um, you know, when she gets home from that first day, she tells, she she goes back and gives Naomi a report. And Naomi says, yes, I know the man. And he's a very good man. Very nice man. She gets it. Naomi gives Ruth like she's talking to her actual daughter. She treats, Naomi treats Ruth like her daughter. She says, yes, he's a good man. Nice man, you know, you know, and, and me and him, you know, she already knows about Boaz. So she knows that he she could trust Boaz with Ruth and tell and let Ruth know that you could trust the man as well. So that's where this this is in this chapter, you know, and This reminds me of the start of a relationship when a woman meets a man. And you may be somewhere, you may be doing some work, and and a man notices that, notices you. But in the process, he sees that you're working. He sees that you're working on something. He sees that you are doing something. You okay, like and and she doesn't she she doesn't um she doesn't approach him. She doesn't approach him and, and throw herself on him or 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 make gestures to be seen. She is working, ladies. Keep working. Because you never know who's watching you. Keep working. Because when you are working, it shows a man that you have priorities. You have you're you're not lazy. You're uh you're you're trying to get to, you know, you're you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. And don't change, don't don't change in the process. You see, Ruth, she he he notices her and she gives him a, a, a speech of gratitude. But she goes back to work. She says thank you. She she you know she say her thank yous and everything. But she don't she you know she don't she don't stop working because the the head the head guy that owns the place. She doesn't um. She doesn't go after him. She doesn't chase him around. She don't stop working in there and focusing on him, trying to win him over. She goes back to work. He gives her permission, and she's like, okay, thank you. All right, I greatly appreciate it. All right, like, you know, she's not really, you know, he's just a regular person to her. And even though she finds out who he is, she doesn't change her perspective. She keeps doing what she's doing. Because she knows she got to eat. She got to survive. She got to, you know, put that work in, you know. And the thing is, ladies, is that keep doing what you're doing. 
Don't stop gleaming. Don't stop gathering. Don't stop. Don't, because you got a business or you do do certain things. And if your house is already together, you already, you, you already prepared. You, you're doing something that when a man comes into your life or notices you, do not stop what you're doing. And do not just just be yourself. Do what you do. And let things happen the way they're supposed to happen. When you first meet a young man, let him just y'all just, you know, he observes you. Men are very observant of women that have their stuff together. Hint, hint. A man will notice you, and that notice will, you know, you know, let let him let him notice you. Let him notice that that you you're doing what you're supposed to do. And don't rush into forcing yourself on somebody. Let, you know, let it work naturally. Let it work uh, uh, the way God wants it to work. Take your time. You know, don't don't rush into something that you haven't taken the time out to learn. Learn the person. Learn their mannerisms. Learn their perspectives, how they think, how they talk, how they feel. Learn the person. Okay? And women, keep doing what you're doing. Okay, because that's when that is a part of it. Where if you're tending to your business, God will tend to his business. God will tend to his business when he wants to send you the right person when you're supposed to have somebody. Okay, just saying, ladies. Okay, all right. So this is our lesson for today. Comes to Ruth and Boaz where they first meet. And... You know, it's it's nice when you know someone notices you. When someone notices you that that you you're not even paying attention to this person, but they're paying attention to you and your actions. So, um, and it's nice when someone sees you for who you are and what you do. And their first impression is, look, okay, I see you. What's your name? Okay, well, uh, I'm not going to stop you from working in my field. And I see that you have a good work ethic. Okay, so you can come in the field. You drink when you get ready. You take a break when you get ready. You do everything, you know, when you get ready. You got, you got, I'm not going to bother you. And the men not going to bother you either. So that's very, very, that's one, that's, that's a positive introduction. I'm going to say it like that. All right, ladies, I want to thank you. I want to thank the men and the women that listen to my podcast. And I greatly appreciate you listening to Daily Devotional today. All right, so that's our lesson for the day. All right, and I will talk to y'all. I will talk to y'all again tomorrow about Ruth, chapter 3, chapter 3, 1 through 18. Chapter 3. 1 through 18, okay? And I will, you know, we will we'll explore that. We'll, we'll, we will explore that, uh, you know, that chapter. Okay, everyone? And I will talk to you later. I love you. Bye-bye. Authors, authors, authors. Have you written a book? Are you an experienced author or a new author? Well, I've got news for you. Authors Excerpt Sunday is the perfect start to growing your audience awareness with the public. Authors Excerpt Sunday has interview spots available in many forms. Live broadcasting done on all social media outlets, television, and podcasting. We would love to help you tell the world about your book. 
You can reach us at I am Sharice at ShariceNJohnsonMoore.com or 724-570-1153 for further details. And let's tell the world about your book. All right, everyone. All right. We have had our time together, and it has been a marvelous one to learn the Word of God. And I want to say thank you to everyone that takes out their time to listen to my podcast. I want to greatly appreciate you and tell you that I love you and I adore you, even though we may not know each other, but I greatly appreciate you. That you support this podcast. Um, yesterday, I put up a poll for you. And the poll was, should I keep this podcast as is or should I turn it into a subscription podcast? Where you pay a fee every month. And the poll, it was, you know, you either give a yes or a no. And um, I would greatly appreciate everyone going to that, you know, to if you have if you have seen that post in the podcast from yesterday, it gave a poll whether I should keep the podcast as is where you it's free or should I turn it into a sub- subscription podcast. Um, I want your input. I really greatly appreciate it if you would answer the poll that I put up. And I wanted to say thank you. Thank you so much. You know, thank you everyone that listens all over the world to this podcast. And I greatly appreciate you. I love you. And I want you to have a blessed day. All right, babies. Love you. Talk to you later. <laughs>